Democratic uh, Congressman Eric Swalwell. Uh, Congressman, thanks for joining me. Thank you, Charles. Uh, President Trump and, and Angela Merkel are going to have a, a conference here r r real soon. One of the big topics will be refugees. This in, in the aftermath of uh, his, the president's executive order being shot down by, by two courts where now you have many people wondering if we just have an activist judiciary uh, or, or, or is there something beyond this? The, what, how do you see this playing out? Because we're, we were, these six countries represent a very small portion of all the Muslims in the world. Thank you, Charles. We have a refugee screening in our country, and the president's policy. But we're talking about refugee screening in those countries. Well, they, they are screened there, then they're screened by the United Nations, and then they're screened by the FBI and the Department of Homeland Security. If he wants to talk about tightening those, those screening efforts, I'm for that. But uh, courts across the country, I don't think they're conspiring against the president. They're following the Constitution, and they're calling it what it is, a Muslim ban. Well, uh, again, you know, it, I'm not sure I trust the screening mechanisms in Syria or, or Libya. Uh, you know, I, I'm not sure out of the rubble of those places that they have the right sort of records and bio, biometric uh, identification. And I don't either, Charles. I, I, that's why so I think it's our FBI and our to Department put a of Homeland in this Security. Because it is a 90-day moratorium. It's not a permanent ban. It's just a 90-day moratorium and perhaps getting everyone focused. Because ultimately, if someone comes in this country from one of those nations and they harm American citizens, they blow themselves up in the mall, who's responsible for that? We all are. But that's why we should make sure that the screenings that we have in place continue to work. They are working right now. But, Charles, what this does is it says to our allies who are taking on refugees, as Germany has, as Jordan has, as other countries in the region have, like Turkey, that we're not a team player. So why would they cooperate with us in counterterrorism? But it also inspires an enemy that is looking for any reason to recruit people to go out and kill Americans. And this would send and propel the myth that we don't welcome Muslims. And I, I think this is a Muslim ban, and I'm glad that the courts are rejecting it everywhere that it's put in front of a judge. Yeah, uh, you know, again, it's, it's, I, I'd be interested in seeing uh, how readily Saudi Arabia op uh, opens their arms to refugees. From what I understand, I've seen photographs of they tent cities. They could do a lot more. They could yeah, do a lot more, Charles. 25,000 air-conditioned right. tents yep. in Saudi Arabia, but they won't take these same refugees. Uh, but they're not ever being accused of discriminating against Muslims. They, they should take a lot more, uh, Charles, and the president should have that conversation with them. I'm with you. Let, let's switch gears a little bit to this uh, situation with the, the, the wiretapping, Russia's involvement in the elections. I, you know, for me, it's a lot of rearview mirror stuff. I, I guess there's a sort of intrigue that, you know, the political intrigue and, and, and so forth. But you're, you're on the House Intel Committee. Where are we with respect to these things? Right. Right now, what we are finding is that as this investigation proceeds, the dots continue to connect President Trump and his team with having personal, political, and financial ties with Russia. Now, that on its own is not illegal. But what we are wondering and what we need to get to the bottom of is did those ties extend to working with the Russians as they were attacking us? Let me give you one example. Carter Page. June 2016, it's revealed that Russia is attacking us. A month later, as when you say a senior... attacking us, what do you mean attacking us? Sure, it, it's a multifaceted campaign of social media trolls using, using Russia Today as a propaganda tool, hacking Democratic emails and then disseminating them to undermine Secretary Clinton and to lift up Donald Trump. But a month after that was revealed, Carter Page, who was a senior foreign policy advisor for the campaign, with the permission of the campaign, travels over to Russia. That is very suspicious, and we want to know, was he working with any Russians as they were attacking us? I don't know why we would send someone to their country as this is being carried out. You, you, you say the campaign. Are you saying that as a euphemism for a Donald Trump, the candidate, now president of the United States? Or is that a euphemism for a whole bunch of people who, were, who may have had close ties, may have been surrogates? Unofficial or official, yeah. because it's, it's, a damning, uh, it's, it's a damning allegation if you're saying yeah. it's the man himself. If you're saying it's people he knew, then so what? So Donald Trump was asked by the Washington Post, hey, who are your foreign policy advisors? He rattled off five names. Carter Page was one of them. He went to Russia as they were attacking us. And what we want to know is, did he work with them? Did the president know about this? And was anyone else involved? We know Roger Stone was also associated with the campaign and was talking to Guccifer 2.0, who were receiving Russian hacked emails and also disseminating them uh, to influence the campaign. It feels, with all due respect, that you're going down a rabbit hole uh, that, that has more to do with the fact that 
Hillary Clinton, John Podesta, they got caught, Donna Brazil, uh, the hand in the cookie jar, uh, uh, you know, hypocrisy run amok, arrogance run amok, and it was put on full display for the whole world. I can understand you're smarting as a party for about this, but it feels like a major distraction for a country that's trying to move ahead. Charles, I think this is about looking forward because the intelligence report that came out back in January said that Russia intends to do this again. And speaking of Germany, they have an election coming up in September. France has an election coming up as well. And so if Russia is going to attack our allies, come back at us, as well as other adversaries who have similar capabilities, and we do nothing about it, this will be a dramatically different democracy for all of us. And I just want to make sure we don't go down that rabbit hole. All right, sir. And I would also just suggest better Better passwords for everyone's computers in the meantime. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> right. Yeah, two-step verification. Thank you very much. Really appreciate Thanks, it.